Joining us now is Ojinika Oji Okwe with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jinix. Good morning. Looking dapper today, this morning. <laughs> good morning, Dr. Abati. How are you? I'm good. Perfect. Thank you. A bit early today. Uh, Rufai, how are you? That's you, Oji. Good, good. good. More work, more work. Fantastic. Well, all right. Well, good morning to you, viewers. Let's begin what's trending with reactions trailing the approval by the Federal Executive Council of over 3 billion Naira for the supply and installation of customized explosive and narcotic detection screening systems for five international airports across the country. The Minister of Aviation and Aerospace Development, Festus Keamu, made the announcement on Monday while briefing State House correspondents. He added that the screening systems will disallow travelers from having their bags opened for manual check. Since I came to office, we have been inundated with complaints of the harrowing experience um, or experiences that um, passengers go through at the airports where they have to physically search their bags. I'm sure you all know about that, and it's been really getting under the skin of Nigerians. Um, you see various agencies lined up, NDLA say, open your bag, immigration, open your bag, customs, open your bag, EFCC, open your bag, and they will dip in your, their hands in your bag. And, you know, so we thought we should um, uh, do something like you have the TSA in America where you have detection machines. So when they pass through your, your, you know, your, machine, your bags through the machines, it detects explosives or any other thing, and that's the end of uh, the search. And so it's for the approval of the award of contract for the supply and installation of customized explosive and narcotics detection screening systems with remote and dual view for the international airports of Abuja, Lagos, Kano, Port Harcourt, and Enugu. Well, all right, Dr. Abati, I heard you hailing this move earlier this morning when, you know, uh, I believe uh, it was on the news headlines. You were talking about the fact that, you know, the screening system is good so that, you know, people will not be touching uh, some private parts and things like that. I heard you this morning, Dr. Abati. But like you heard him say, it is for a screening system for explosives and narcotics um, at this point. But my issue here is, do we really need that at the airports? I mean, given that the whole infrastructure at the airport needs a total overhauling. We have screening systems in place. We know that we do have that. When you want to uh, pass your bags through, there's uh, some airports that do have those systems. And there is manual checks all over the world, Dr. Bati. Even when I come back home to Nigeria, sometimes when I open my bag, there's this uh, you know, paper that would show that the TSA had checked my bag manually. They'll open it up and they'll check it. So I don't know if this is the right time to be, you know, um, appropriating a 3.2 billion naira for screening of explosives and narcotics. Um, you, may, you may have a point, but there are issues on ground. And I'll read some of them. There's the lack of ILS, which is the instrument landing system. My biggest issue here. I remember when I was going to the village last month for my mother's uh, one year memorial and um, you know, I had to, we had to hoover for at least 30 minutes because the aircraft couldn't land. And this is because of lack of instrument landing system, which I think I want to put that uh, to the attention of uh, the uh, aviation minister. And which also brings me to my next story. In the meantime, the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority has suspended all wet leased aircraft in the fleet of United Nigeria Airlines after an Abuja-bound flight landed in Asaba over the weekend. The airline said the flight was diverted to Asaba due to poor destination weather. However, according to independent newspaper, sources from the NCAA revealed that a dispatch error by one of the flight dispatchers of the airline led to the diversion. The source claimed that reports received from the air traffic controllers contradicted the claim of the airline. Dr. Abati, let me just read some statements that was in that newspaper. According to the NCAA source, they claim that the airline may have used weather conditions to douse the error, but the reports received from the air traffic controller contradicted the claim which I just read. The source also said that the event was due to a dispatch error, which I said, the airline decided to use weather to divert attention. But their communication with us told us what really happened. The pilots were properly briefed before they boarded. 
But when the pilots saw the document before them, the dispatch document was saying ABB instead of ABV, which is abbreviation for Abuja and Asaba. So they proceeded to Asaba, but didn't communicate with the cabin crew. Maybe if they had communicated with the cabin crew, they would have been able to tell the pilots that it was supposed to be for Abuja, not Asaba. They announced they were going to Abuja, and suddenly everyone found themselves in Asaba. But I know you must have seen those rejoined our statement by United Airlines saying that it was due to weather. NCAA is investigating, and we'll wait for that report to come out. Well, NCAA is not just investigating. NCAA has also suspended yes, flights by Wetley's aircraft, of Wetley's aircraft by uh, you know, United uh, Airlines. Beyond that, I made the point earlier that the minister is meeting with the heads of the various agencies today. He had met them before when he gave them a marching order that anybody that behaves in a manner that would uh, result in his being removed as a uh, Minister of Aviation and uh, Aerospace Development will be removed before uh, President Tinubu uh, uses him as a, as a scapegoat. And so he says that, look, apart from the investigations, looking into many of the incidents that have occurred, there will be sanctions. And I made the point that we're looking forward to seeing those sanctions. Because in the aviation sector, security and safety are paramount. Where you drop the ball, in any regard, it could lead to, you know, uh, tragedy. And you are very right that it's not just about scanning machines that are wrong. The infrastructure is decaying. After all, the uh, minister had to move, you know, arrival lounge to another part of the wing uh, of the uh, international airport in Motala Mohammed here in uh, Lagos the other day. But even that is causing a lot of problems. In terms of facilities at our airports, mm -hmm. many of these airports, the air conditioning is not working. The conveniences are in a very bad shape. So you are right to say it goes beyond you know, scanners. There's a whole lot that has to be done. You mentioned the uh, ILS, uh, which is the uh, landing uh, you know, uh, system. Uh, many of the airports don't have landing no. ILS, which was why you know, one of the explanations given by an expert in, on the subject was that when the uh, private jet overran the uh, runway in Ibadan, it was because there was no ILS. And then many of these airports, you, you can only operate there within certain hours of the day. They will say, okay, you can't take off before this time, and the airport must close at so, so time. Even putting airline operators, all of them generally, into difficulty because the number of hours that they can do is limited due to poor infrastructure you know, within the system in Nigeria. So it's uh, a cocktail of things uh, that will have uh, to be addressed. And then, of course, we all know that we've been having quite a number of incidents. Uh, the other day, one uh, aircraft had to abort uh, its flight because uh, they said it had uh, broken wings. You know, that could have led to serious uh, trouble. Dana Air, uh, the other day, had to abandon its flight because he said uh, there were operational challenges. Max Air, it's also said to be uh, in a very poor shape. I mean, you can't have an aviation sector where, you know, just about only one or two airlines are really in a, in a good shape. So this is uh, the major problem. About uh, these scanners, well, there's something called international standards. What is the international standard? Our people here, they, for some other reasons, don't do things the right way. And that's why the emphasis should be on sanctions, not just by the ministry, but also by, you know, customs. Yes, when you are traveling, they have these machines that you pass your things through. But when you return, mm. after taking your bag from the car, you say, you have to pass through customs. Customs would insist on checking your bag. It's not every bag that they check. Mm. Maybe, yeah, maybe world, based on Abbasi. suspicion. But the point I Man made earlier in. is that in other parts of the world, when they want to check your bag, maybe there's something they suspect. I do at least wear gloves. How many of our people here at Motala <laughs> Mohammed wear gloves? So that's the issue, the gloves. And they will be putting their hands <laughs> inside the people's bag. So the invasion of privacy is the point I was talking about. <laughs> you know, everywhere. about raising the standards. Yeah. Okay? Well, you buy a, 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 a chocolate. For your, for your children, or you buy biscuit. One bushman 
you know, because he's wearing uniform, we will be carrying the chocolate. We will be, Unacceptable. If, I, if, I, if you are not careful, they will ask you to give you their own. Out of it. No, this is the kind of thing we are talking about. Always. Okay? Yes. So, and the minister should look at safety, should look at standards, and should impose sanctions if need be. But he should not start behaving like a headmaster. Mm -hmm. He should also listen to those heads of agencies and see how the Nigerian government can help address their issues. 3.2 billion for scanners in I five know. airports. Well, I hope there will be due diligence. I hope there will be transparency. And I hope that we, the people of Nigeria, we, the people who use those five international airports in Kano, in Port Harcourt, in, uh, in uh, Lagos, in Abuja, you know, uh, and Enugu, will be allowed to know when those scanners are bought yes. and where they were bought. And yes. nobody should go and buy second-hand scanners yes. that will pack up after one month. <laughs> All right, uh, Rufai. I mean, uh, the inadequacy at our airport. It, it, it has to be said. So what we need is a total re rehaul yes. of our institutions. You see, these days I struggle to ask which institutions are working in Nigeria. Maybe not too many. Which institution works in Nigeria that there's no, in Nigerian palace, one comma or the other? And it's not a case of saying, trying to denigrate your nation. He's speaking facts. Mm -hmm. Oh, probably a bright spot would be Minister of Interior, you know, that was able to clear. But some people are also saying they're able to clear the passport, back, the backlog. backlog. Of, but some yeah. people are also saying they're facing challenges, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, wow, look at the aviation sector. Mm -hmm. Oji, oh, as in landing device, have you gone to the toilets? <laughs> so I actually went for the, the my trip in back. Airports. My trip back from Egypt, I went. Uh, I I used the uh, newly uh, built airport. It uh, was actually really nice. Okay, very the, nice. The, the toilets. Yes, the toilets were uh, nice. Maybe because but it's the old terminal that has uh, the issue. Some so, of the issues, like even the the, the baggage area uh, where. Where you have to put your bags, the luggage is enough space. Let's wait for I some mean, years. Let's wait for some years. It's still new terminal. They just started using it when, when. No, it's if really nice. You, it's really it's nice. nice because oh, it's yeah. new. Yeah. I'm talking about maintenance culture. Yes. At some point, Mojala Mohammed, that first wing was, was nice because it was new. It was yeah. more, that airport was modeled after Schiphol mm -hmm. in Amsterdam. But you can see how the carousel belts, you are trying to get your luggage, the, 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 the rubber slap is pulling out. Absolutely. The carousel I, belt everywhere is dirty. You get the first immigration officer, I say, welcome, what do you bring for us? Money, give us money, give us money. Police officers, they are asking you for money. Every yeah. You see, these are people that give Nigeria image of a beggar nation. Yeah. I have anxiety when I come. You get, so you money. have all sorts of shenanigans going on in that system. Then the general look and feel, then the ACs. That's why I have anxiety. So when we just the ACs, like hot. very hot, yeah. another one. The ACs are not in good no. condition and everything. So it is a complete overhaul. I'm happy that the new wing is good it's, because it's, it's new. It's really nice. But I would like to see it five years from now or ten years from now before you start to see things are falling apart. So we need a holistic reform of the aviation sector. And I don't think it's government that will do it alone. We need our airport to be fit for purpose in such a way that we can even concession our airports. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of Nigerians willing to run these airports. I mean, we saw the works of the likes of the Babalaki on the local airport. If we can concession our airports, I mean, we keep telling the story of how a Nigerian was running Gatwick at a point. Mm -hmm. So if we can concession our airports, the Asaba Airport, a year is up for concession. How far have we been able to so, do that? I'm getting some messages, some, some people sending me some um, other ideas, lack of transit facilities and transit That's another areas one. in our what, international what about, airports. What about uh, uh, the trolleys? Yes, uh, entire uh, dilapidated Tro carousel for Carousel. Oh, that one is there. Inadequate check-in spaces for airlines inadequate leading to delay. In fact, in yeah. fact, lack of... Lack, also, lack of proper logistical planning right. that when you have a barrage of people that come to the airport, yeah. then the next thing they can't. So, I mean, there's, there's also lack of adequate apron space for aircraft parking in which our is major a, Which airports. is a problem, yeah. even with this new terminal. 
So that's why you have to be fair read. That's yes. why you have to taxi yes. to this new terminal because there are no airport strings on this new terminal. And there was a building design problem. For the United Airlines, and let me just clarify. I'm able to get a correct something that said it's just one of their aircraft that is on wet list that has been suspended. Because when we keep saying suspended, because we also be, have to be careful about their business because mm -hmm. you know, people are thinking, oh, maybe I should not book them. It's only one of their aircraft that was affected in the wet list. I just had to. But why are we even having this problem? It's a complete breakdown and a complete breakdown of things in the system. I am happy the aviation minister has looked at this, but also the wording of his tweets I have problems with because you should be able to specify what you are meeting the stakeholders for so we know. But when you just say general safety concerns, people start to think of the days of social so, mm. so that we bring all of this, you know. We just want a better airline sector. It's not that you think I feel happy coming to talk here that the carousel in the former wing yeah. was always pulling out, you know, and your luggage and all of that. And also the way they tamper with your luggage. Oh, you have had an incident mm -hmm. where my luggage stayed a, over a day over in the airport before you got there. They had torn through the luggage. Oh, I've gone through a lot of suitcases. Yeah. Every time I travel, so they I have tear to through it, especially suitcase. that place you that they normally put luggage. Point. Every How time. come that they go there, they tear through it, and the airport authorities can't do anything? They will have well, fiddled right. and put hand and stolen things from your luggage. All right, I think we've done justice to this story. That yes, ILS right. thing is so important. It gives everyone anxiety to be on, you know, on air, just waiting to land because, you know, there's not enough uh, landing uh, system. It needs to be reviewed. We'll take another story. We're continuing with our review of each state's budget performance report, this time in Edo State, where the Godwin Obasaki-led administration, which is now in its seventh year, is said to have spent 973 million naira on bank charges between January and June of 2023. This is according to the state's second quarter 2023 budget performance report posted on its website. A further breakdown of the budget report, which is tagged Budget of Resilience and Transformation also showed that 425 million naira was spent on meals and refreshments and an additional 330 million naira was expended on donations and gifts, while the sum of 212 million naira was spent on welfare in three months. Uh, Rufa, you did a great job early this morning with yeah. that link that you sent me about the state's budget, budget performance. We are seeing these states wasting money. This is what I'll call it. Please, Dr. Abati, can you help me out with these bank charges? What is this idea with this 900 and something million on bank? What, what is that? Well, I have no idea. I mean, maybe it has to do with the volume of transactions and the nature of transactions. So we don't know. But the more, the one that we've been worrying about is, mm. the, is the amount of food that uh, these state governments, one after the other, consume. Uh, in this particular case, we're talking of uh, how much on feeding alone, yeah. you know, close to 800, 700 yes, close million to, yes, with the in three months. Involved as well and all uh, of that, yeah. Maybe we should begin to advocate that people should, you cited the example of uh, Mrs. Uh, Obama, right? Mm -hmm. Who was saying that, look, in the White House, you even pay for what you eat. So maybe something will have to be done about this uh, feeding. But I keep making the point. Now, all these states have houses of assembly. These houses of assembly, they have oversight role. So it's good for us in the media to be looking at the budget reports and say, oh, why did you spend close to one billion only on meals? But what is the job of the state house of assembly? But these state house of assembly members, they are also complicit in the matter. They are part of the gluttony that has been uh, uh, reported. And that's most unfortunate because in other jurisdictions, even when you are given a gift, you have to report it. Mm. There are certain gifts that the American president is not allowed to collect. But here in Nigeria, oh, okay. They collect free food, they collect free vehicles, they collect free everything. We are subsidizing people who are supposed to be serving us. Mm -hmm. And the scandalous part of it is that now uh, uh, people are going to government to go and develop pot bellies by overfeeding. Well, 
It's a pity. So if they spend so much on food, you can imagine what the case is with other things. Well, all right. I guess we'll uh, go uh, on a, a quick break. And when we come back, What's Trending on the Morning Show will continue. Stay with us. Welcome back to the morning show. We are still on what's trending. Rufai, before we went on a break there, we were discussing the state's budget performance report. And I'll pull up something that you sent me, actually. It says uh, the country's 36 states have reportedly spent $1.71 on recurrent expenditures, including allowances, foreign trips, office stationery, and aircraft maintenance. We talked about Abia state government spending uh, almost 400 uh, million on feeding mm. and welfare and 223 on refreshment and meals. 200 million. Yeah, well, 223, 223 million. million on That's refreshment and meals. Then there is an, a, a separate charge that they claim. Uh, not mm. the governor's that... office. <laughs> <laughs> ministries, departments. By the way, the yes. governor is not even living in the state house, I heard. I saw a video saying that he's still in his village, uh, you know, the so last he's administration. The state yes, he's running anyway, the state house. So, so that's, that, that, that's I guess, the kind of president we said. See, and yeah. that is in the state. He's mm. inside the state. Inside yes. the state. If he comes to work from his house, no problem. Yeah, because so, a lot of money was spent on that uh, uh, government house as well. So so I think still the further report, and that's yes. the research report, was talking about 34 billion, for instance, Benway State, of mm. special day celebration, security votes. Boronu Cross River Delta 20, 33, 43, 152, 30.9, 40.41.1 billion on frivolous items. You know, funds may have been mismanaged. It could dispense state spent 31.3 billion on local and international travel, transport, miscellaneous. You know, Enugu Gombe State 33 and 24 billion, and it keeps going. And you know, all of these billions this state are spending. Ask these governors their IGR. In the first quarter of the year, most states could not even attract foreign investments. But you see, they are so concerned about the money they get from the feeding bottle of FAC. And they take more loans and they take more debt. And that's how some people have argued that the states are not viable. We must be able to have an exit clause where, really, if we want states to work in this country, we must be able, that, that might call for a constitutional reform, maybe sometime in the future, this thing I'm saying, maybe when we are ready, maybe maybe in the 2030s or 2035, when we finally decide to say we want full autonomy of state and you know we want you know to devolve more powers to the state, we might think of this. We might have a sunset clause on FAC. Maybe probably we keep FAC money as future fund and allow the state to run themselves based on what they generate. Absolutely. Like because that. if we don't do that, these governors will just continue to eat the money because they see it and they spend it. I mean, there was a governor that was said when he was first voted in and the first time he saw the monthly allocation, he screamed and almost lost his mind. So these are the kind of wasteful people we put in our states. And that's why Serap is saying the, the loans we are giving Nigerians, these are what the governors are just frittering the money on. So it's a sad reality and it's a sad reflection on the country we've built, you know. But the budget appropriation bill will be passed soon, or it will be transmitted to the National Assembly. When they bring out the line item, I know it's normally over 500 pages or 600 pages. It's best for us to scrutinize this. I'm sure when the budget is finally made, and you scrutinize the line item, you see a lot of frivolous spending more in the budget. I mean, you saw the first revelation that came out with uh, uh, Honorable Jubri back in the days of budget padding, because cons with all of these two, you know, Nash, we have not even talked about the ones National Assembly members do and the corruption. Okay, the corruption scandal that ICPC revealed that time for procurement for National Assembly on members on constitution projects, what ended that scandal? You see, we don't ask questions. When we talk, we say, oh, Rufa, you like to criticize. You don't like. <laughs> don't I want worry. Nigeria to work. I want to come here and say, can see Nigeria is working. I want to boost about yes. Nigeria. Yeah. That's what I want to do. We'll but you see, it's a, it's a bedlam of sorrow narrative every day. We'll continue to report on the state. So. Well, in Kaduna State, uh, Governor Uba San is expanding the state's rural road projects by flagging off the construction of a 10.2 kilometer feeder road in Kudan local government area of the state, a road that would link about 20 villages. The governor also flagged off the installation of transformers and upgrade of power supply lines across the eight local government areas and installation of 2,000 solar street lights. I'm here to also commission the solar lights 
here in Mekanpu local government. And we are also going to follow it up with many Greeks in all the rural local governments of our own state. Our effort is to ensure that we revitalize the economies of the people that are living in rural areas. That is the only way we can reduce the level of poverty and create employment and improve the level of productivity in our state. Well, all right. Uh, congratulations to Kaduna State. I mean, it's good to see the governor there, you know, taking all of all these initiatives, installing solar panels. You know, we've always, always talked about that, to move away from petrol and move more to gas and solar lights. But also yesterday, we talked about President Cyril Ramaphosa, you know, commissioning the tap in... Uh, in that uh, town in the village. But it's good to see, like you said, I love that history, that background history that you gave about the fact that that village didn't have, you know, water for a long time. Same here in Kaduna, that area that the solar panel lights are installed didn't have power for a long time. So congratulations. We'll take another story. Well, Nigerian rapper, Folarin Falana, also known as Fals, has shared his excitement about his mother, Fumi Falana, who became a senior advocate of Nigeria on Monday. His father, Femi Falana, who is also a well-known SAN, was present at the ceremony alongside 57 others who were decorated as senior advocates of Nigeria. <laughs> Dr. a family of lawyers, you know you've always told me this about your family, all of them are going to study law, but it's great to see. Congratulations to Fumi Falana, SAN, at this point. Dr. Abati, really Well, quickly. congratulations yeah. to Mrs. Fumi Falano, uh, the pillar yes. behind Mr. Femi Falano, SAN, and uh, both of them have been able to, you know, build a very strong reputation in legal practice. And uh, to use this occasion to thank uh, the Falanos, one of my sons, you know, when he was abroad, each time he came home, he always worked at their chambers. And when he was doing his law school attachment, he worked uh, uh, directly as, uh, Mrs. F uh, or with uh, Mrs. Fumi Falano as head of uh, chambers, you know, helping to groom uh, younger people. So it's not surprising that she herself has uh, attained the rank of, uh, yeah. you know, a learned silk. So you have the Falanos now, husband SEN, wife SEN. Before you joined us, I said, well, this is not unusual in the legal profession, yes. though. The Azingis, Professor Epiphany Azingi and his wife, Mrs. Valerie Azingi, they are both SENs. The Awumalos, husband and wife, are both uh, SENs. You have the Falanos now, and there are many more other examples. And I think that will inspire others. Uh, but more importantly, is the fact that the privilege of becoming a learned seal comes with its own burdens. Mm. You know, it's a lot of responsibility. And that's why, you know, the CJN, uh, Justice uh, Uluka de Aruwala was saying at the event that, look, uh, lawyers must be above board like Caesar's wives. And when you attain this rank, more is expected from you. Uh, many senior advocates, you know, uh, become senior advocates and they get bogged down by the burden of it because it's not easy to get to that rank, but it also comes with its own uh, challenges. And it's good to see Fals, Falani uh, Falano, you know, uh, celebrating uh, the mother. He himself is a lawyer, by the way. Yeah, that's you why know. I said family of yes, lawyers. But, yes, but uh, for now, he's a musician. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but his parents have a very, you know, uh, flourishing practice, uh, which he probably, when he, he retires as a uh, 
an artist, he, he could he, he would just go and take his wig and gown, That's it. and then he has an That's office it. waiting at home. So don't be surprised in the future <laughs> right. if you see files in the courtroom arguing cases. Absolutely, that's his grandmother right there, the woman yeah, in yellow. So it's it's a very beautiful. very happy that's moment for everybody yeah. in that family, and we celebrate with them mm -hmm. and all the other fifty-seven others uh, who got to the rank of. Uh, you know, SAM. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Congratulations to the fallen us. Well, we'll take our final story in the United States under entertainment, highlighting Grammy Award winning artist Beyonce's new trailer for her upcoming film, Renaissance, a film by Beyonce. The film, which is set for release on December 1st, showcases the icon's hard work and creative process after her record breaking Renaissance World Tour. So, do you like this show? I don't know what you're waiting for. I think about all of my heroes and all that they endured. Thank God you record. Oh, she's so powerful. I'm definitely going to tune in December 1st. Congratulations to Beyonce. Well, I'd like to uh, thank you both for your great analysis, as always, on What's Trending. Well, all right. Well, that's all I have for you on What's Trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.